Okay, it's Redback Spider roundup time again. Redback Spiders are not to be toyed with. They are one of Australia's most deadly spiders. Let me go up to my spider control chart. As I'm making this Redback Roundup video, it's December 22nd. It is our longest day of the year. For the bulk of my audience, it would be your shortest day of the year if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. It's also a time when I would normally do a Redback Spider burnout in the backyard, but because of the really bad fires and the total fire bans, I can't do that. In fact, yesterday at my place, it looked like the apocalypse. It was all orange. It was horrible looking. It was actually a little bit scary, and there was char and ash falling from the sky. Man, it was just a crazy, crazy day. I get a lot of comfort looking at my spider control chart here. And if you don't know, basically I should come in and burn every now and then during the spider season. It basically breaks up the redback spider's breeding cycle because I know how long the egg sacs take to develop. What I've done this year is a little bit unusual. I've actually got traps out in the garden that the redbacks love to live in. And this video will be about inspecting those spidey traps. Warning. The warning on this video has been removed and this video is highly educational. Today isn't about toying around or playing with spiders, it's about proper spider control. I'm going to need a jar in case I find any egg sacs in the traps that I've set up. I'm going to need some Coles Multi, which has got a redback spider there. In case I find some redbacks, we're not going to be collecting any of these. I'll use my lovely uh, monkey tool there. It's sort of world famous, it's really great for dragging spiders out from underneath tubs. And I also like to bring along my Dyson vacuum cleaner. So guess what? I'm not going to need Thomas the Tank. See you later, alligator. Sorry, Thomas, but sometimes it gets like that round here. You should know that. Today is such a contrast to yesterday that felt like the end of the world. It's a nice overcast day. It's actually nice and cool. And it's refreshing because we are in, well, the middle of summer. And I'm going to start down in this back corner here. My wife's been doing some tidying up here. That tub uh, used to be over here. She's actually moved some of these spider traps around. Uh, makes it a bit curious, doesn't it? I can't see any web there. And this little one here, I can't see web there, but we'll take a look inside them. This is a really cheap way of doing it. It's a Kmart thing in Australia, uh, $7. And let's just see, okay. Uh, I can see web up inside there. Uh, let me get out my iPhone camera. I'll take a couple of pictures because the spider here is extremely small and maybe the pictures is going to tell us exactly what sort of spider that is. At the moment, just looking up there, all I can see is a, a peeny weeny spidey. I've seen the photographs from my iPhone. It's tiny. I, I really can't tell what that is and maybe the audience can. I will put this back uh, where it was somehow like that. Whoa. Now there is something here that's caught my eye. Now, let's take a look down here. Now this may be leftovers from my redback spider roundup from last time. Look at that there, that's all the stuff redback spiders love to munch through. That is black beetles and things. Yes, yeah, so let's bring it back a few memories there. Let's take a look at this next spider trap and see what we've got inside. Mind you, mummy has been playing here. I can't see any web there, but who knows what's going on up there. Hmm. I, I'll be honest here, I'm not really seeing anything I want to see. There is a bit of web there, but I'm not going to mince around and waste time where we're not seeing something spectacular. At the last Redback Roundup, and I found Redbacks here, I split the tubs up and put a gap in between them, and I'm thinking for spiderific action just there. I can also see some ant action as well, and I know where the ants are, the Redbacks tend not to be. I've got my monkey tool here, and I'm just going to do a bit of a drag through here. It's no drag doing a spider drag with this tool. And if a redback is here, or something, it will appear on this tool. Well, that's a theory, isn't it? Oh, something dropped. Mm, I'm getting webbed there. Let's take a close look at that. Okay, that's uh, juvenile redback activity, I believe, and I think I can see the spider. Let me zoom in and we'll see her. There she is there. Oh, an ant just, um, whoa, that was some action. There she is there. She's in dangerous territory there because there's ants around. Hmm. Very interesting. She's on the edge of the grass there. She's very hard to see because she's only tiny. It's a small female redback. I'm just going to grab her here. And I'm just, oh, good night, sister, sorry. And I'm just going to give it to the ants. If I put her down there, although she's all squishied up, I'll just get her off the tweezers there. Uh, the ants can enjoy her. 
There's actually, it's quite bizarre to look at. There's weird, something going on weird with one end on one side uh, to the right, but right in the middle of the screen is where that red back spider is, and there's more ants now coming down. The ant colony is going to be very happy with me. I'm just going to wind back a bit here because now when I've made the video I can see more clearly what that small red back spider is and it's a male. I can see what looks like two little pom-poms at the front of the spider and when red back spiders are spiderlings or maturing they can be often very difficult to identify. The male red back spiders are curious critters. They don't live for very long, roughly six months and they don't grow very big. They are often on the outskirts of the redback spider nest. And usually the fate of a male redback spider is it gets eaten by the female redback spider. So yes, you could call it love at first bite. So remember that little bit of web there was the beginnings of what was going to be a nightmare that would have developed up there. And I really do miss hitting this area with the flamethrower because the flamethrower is really good at nabbing little things like that and tidying up this area really fast and efficiently. I'll just move on to some more spidey traps in the garden. This is more the Rolls-Royce model. Uh, I like this one because of the way you inspect it. Uh, I'm not seeing any web here. So that's sort of going to tell me potentially there's nothing up here. But it's got a pop-off lid. And we can see what's going on inside. Okay, there's a spider there. It's a friendly spider. We're not going to touch that spider. It seems to have turned this into its home. So hopefully in seeing that spider there, uh, there's really not much else to see down here and it looks pretty good apart from a little bit of spidey web. So I'll come in and close this one up nice and carefully so it does prove that the spideys like to live in these little spider traps. Okay, there's another one here. It's one of the cheap little ones. I'm not really seeing um, any spider web down here. Let's take a look inside. Because you never know what's lurking inside, do you? Okay. It looks pretty clean if there is, oh actually, I'll get my, my iPhone out, out again, there is a very juvenile spider there. It may be a juvenile red back, um, you can look at the pictures and you can tell for me, I hope. This spider is tiny, it's only a spiderling, I think it's a greyhouse spider, it's just balling up all the time. I'm trying to make it run so I can see its legs and all, uh, but I'm not having any luck and the iPhone photos uh, really didn't tell me much more because it was balling up all the time. Uh, we'll live and let live, hey? And I'll get it back where it was before. And again, it's confirmation to me that these do attract spiders. These cheaper traps have uh, been out the, the less, least amount of time. It's about two months that these have been in the garden. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, Mummy has been spreading around coffee grounds. That's it there. In fact, there's some ants in the coffee grounds as well. Um, there's a bit here as well. Um, I'm not seeing any spider web under this trap here. This is the one which is set up with the magnets and the pot holder with an inverted galvanized blah blah. I can't talk now. Let's see what's going on under here. Okay, I can see web, um, but I'm not, well, there's not a spider really sticking out at me. And if I'm not seeing something spectacular, we might just move on. There could be a little spider there somewhere, and when they're small and if they feel threatened, they ball up and then they're almost invisible. I know there's lots of ant activity around here. And as I often say, if there are ants nearby, uh, the redbacks really struggle in setting up a home. I'll just move on to something that's gonna take us up a notch, I hope. Okay, it's this area here. I know there's a redback spider operating here, even though at the moment, I can't see any web out. I did a whole study here with my Arlo camera of what the spider's up to. It was actually quite fascinating watching what was going on in the middle of the night and um, I think it's time to nab this spider. I'm pretty sure it's up underneath here somewhere. A bit tricky holding the camera and doing a monkey tool. I'm just going to monkey tool along here and uh, see what pops out, eh? Oh, I just saw a little spider pop down. Hmm. I'm not really seeing what I want to see at the moment. Oh, come on. I'm just now wondering whether this spider's moved on or I'm just not using the monkey tool in a go. Oh, there's another spider there. 
Okay, well, that looks like a red back to me. I wonder if the birds have come along and cleaned up this spider. Sorry for the rogue footage because I'm trying to do two things at once here. Very strange. This spider may have moved on from living up under there. Hmm. Well, that there's a remnants of that red back spider's nest. Um, yeah, she was there. I can show you more footage of what she was doing at night. Uh, curious spider. It wasn't making its web every night. And I studied it for about, oh, it felt like about three weeks watching it doing its webby work. It was um, quite exciting to watch. Very much a spider that operated at the same time every night. What I will do here, because I saw all other juveniles, I'll just give it some spidey spray, eh? Okay, moving on to another trap. It's a smaller trap. Oh, I can't see any web underneath. Uh, but that doesn't mean there's uh, no spider around. Let's just take a look inside oh, and see what's going on. My oh, crikey's uh, looks totally clean, so we will uh, move on in a messy way. I did tidy that up. There's actually something about this area here, and I notice uh, that there's no spider activity on the pots here. And I remember when I did the cicada study, there's, there's actually a major ant colony. There was uh, the pony ants were living here. If I move this, we might see some curious activity, eh? Oh, I hate it when I move something and I don't see what I want to see. And I know they're around here. Maybe I've just got to flick something over. Okay, uh, exactly what I wanted to see to prove my point. A nice uh, black ant colony there, lovely. The ants are definitely the friends of the garden. Um, I've learned a lot about them from looking at the spiders in the garden. And I will put back as it was before. Now considering the ant colony was just there, this is our next redback spider lair, trap, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I can't see any web underneath here. Which really, look, that's a great sign. You know, I, I don't want these things around, but I'm trying to lure them to places I want them. <gasps> Ooh, the spider web, and I think there's a nice, friendly spider up there. Yeah, yeah. This spider's big enough to see with the camera without using the iPhone. I believe it's a, a cement spider, grey, widow, whatever. Maybe I'll be corrected. Uh, oops, it's on the move there. I'm just shooting something on my iPhone here to prove a point about this spider fan and this spider trap uh, this is a great house spider and I know that when they feel threatened they just basically ball up and this spider here is going to well it's gonna run for me first but it's a sort of spider that just balls up and okay it's just done it cool uh, that there that's very characteristic of the cement spider great house spider yeah that's a good spider to have around I certainly keep this one here uh, I think while that one is there, the red backs can't be there, but mind you, you've also got the ants hanging around as well to contend with. This is the last of the, uh, I'll call the backyard traps. Uh, there's no web underneath, which is telling me a story already, but you never know what's going to happen when you pop off the lid, hey? Woo! And Crikey's, there's some web in there. So if there's a web, there's going to be a spidey. Well, there's one thing seeing web, but um, it's a bit boring when there's not a spectacular spider jumping out at you. Uh, if I'm not seeing anything super spectacular, I think it's best to live and let live. And just let it, let it um, get on with its little life in there. There's a really curious part of our backyard, and it's sort of where the redback spider story started, where I found them amongst the Tonka toys. And I set up this area and I thought I'll leave it, well basically, untouched for a period of time. What's happened is it's turned into like a mini Chernobyl, where the weeds have taken over, and the experimental Tonka vehicle that I had down there, uh, well it just looks like Chernobyl, doesn't it? Uh, but one thing I can see, and I did look at this back in winter time, there was a lot of ant activity. I think basically the ants have taken over, so if the ants are there, I don't think the spiders will be there at all. You know what, this has almost been here two years because now I look at the date here. Okay, it says here January 1, 2018. Well, we're almost up to, well, January 1, 2020. So yes, this little experiment has actually burned out a year longer than I expected, but it might be very exciting to pull this apart one day in the future. 
This here's our back steps and there was a very curious thing that happened uh, right in the middle of our winter. It was right in the last weeks of July. A redback spider had set up a nest here. It was actually active in wintertime which I'd never seen. There was a bubble of very warm weather and I saw the web here and I set up an Arlo camera here and I ended up capturing what the spider was up to and it was actually living up inside here but I'm yet to get this video together. I'm just looking around other parts of the garden before I head out the front, just where the redbacks uh, like to set up. I'm not seeing their web. Uh, their web's fairly easy and distinct to see. And while I'm here, do you remember this plant here? Who's got a good memory? It was about two years back, three years back. I hit this tree with so much flamethrower and all the stink bugs fell off. But I'm starting to see something a bit sinister going on up there. Look who's back, those horrible stink bugs. These things are so destructive it's not funny. I might have a chemical spray here to get rid of them. I'm not sure whether Coles Multi does sink bugs. Can I see a stink bug along the side of the can there? Oh, I don't care, these guys are going to get a good night, sister. Hasta la vista, stink bugs. I think that, that's done a bit to them, but I'm not seeing them drop to the ground like a flamethrower does them. Yeah, they're trying to shake it off by the looks of it. Horrible things. I'll tell you one thing, they're putting out a lot more of their stink, so that spray, they didn't like it at all, but they're not dropping. I don't think it's had any effect on them at all. They're just marching around as if um, it's just another day. I can't believe it. You can run, but you can't hide, and next time I can hit this with a flamethrower, it's going to be really good night, sister. I'm just looking over the garden still before I head out the front. And uh, this area here was sometimes you get the odd red back spider. And um, okay, I can see something curious there. It's a nerf dart seemingly hanging in midair. Okay, I would say this is red back. I can see what looks like a, a bee in there. Uh, yeah, there's that nerf dart in the web. I've got the monkey tool here. Maybe I need to do a bit of a drag along here. Okay, uh, look very carefully. I'm trying to hold the camera here and do a drag. And I'll we'll just see what's going to come out if I do that. It might be a very small red back in here. Mm. Sorry for the background noises. There's all sorts of shenanigans going on next door. Something about when I get a camera out, noises start. And I'm trying to see a spider here. Um, but it's not appearing for me, unfortunately. I'm just going to do a chemical spray in here. Um, if there is a spider there, I don't think it's going to get past that. I'm not really that keen on chemical because it tends to take out uh, good critters as well. I'm just taking a look at the rest of the backyard here. And I think we're pretty much safe. And I'll just show you the pumpkin vine here, which is just kicking off and it'll grow right out across the grass. Except the grass is looking a little bit, call it dry, eh? Very dry. Okay, I've moved out, out to the front. There's a couple of traps to check up on. Uh, a couple of things I can see here. There's charcoal here from yesterday. I can see web as well underneath here. So, yeah, that's what was raining down on us yesterday from the fires in the Blue Mountains. Uh, there's web here, which is a good sign. But I'm also seeing ants scattering around. Uh, I'll be very curious when we open up this one, and I'll get straight into it. Okay, oh, it's nice and warm. The sun's actually just popped out. Oh, there's a lot of web here, actually. Okay, let's just very carefully look up inside there. Ooh, crikey's, I can see a red back. Okay, there's a very young, very, very young a spiderling there, red back, it's female, and there's also a more mature red back there. I'm just thinking back to how Bindi grew. That spider could be from the very, very beginning of the spider season this year. Going by the size of her, I've taken photographs of my phone so we can see her a little bit clearer. The main thing here is I'm not seeing an egg sac, so this is early days yet. Uh, it's really nice to see the spiders being attracted to this very, very cheap type of little home uh, that I found. And I'll just put this back together nice and carefully without uh, disturbing her too much. I'm glad those spiders like the cheaper homes. Uh, there's a more elaborate home here, more like the Rolls-Royce model. Um, what's disturbing me is I can't see any web here. Hmm. I should have gone to the cheap home, shouldn't I? Because they seem to be more successful. Let's just take a look what's going on inside here. I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm not seeing very much things. And no, uh, it looks uh, pretty clean. So I'll just put all this back together. And <laughs> I'll just go out and buy those cheap homes that I found in Kmart. 
Okay, this is the last red bag area we're going to take a look at. It's at the front of our house. It became a red bag zone very quickly. Uh, I know there's a red bag spider here because there was one here before. There's red back web all underneath here, and it's actually now progressed over to the black pot here. Actually, hang on a second. There's um, there's a stick insect there. Let me just grab that guy out of here. Oh, crikey, we had a really windy day. It's still alive. Cool, uh, let me just grab this guy and take a look at this stick insect, eh? Before the web blow. There we go there. Um, very, very interesting. It's only young, I think. I've never seen them this small. Put it this way, if it was anywhere else, I'd never notice it. Uh, it's nice and green. Uh, we had a really, really windy day at the end of yesterday, which blew the smoke away, and possibly it's blown down from the top of a tree. I don't know whether it's in that good a shape, actually. Hmm. Oh, it's just gone to the ground. Don't like the look of the way it's acting there. Um, yeah, I'm sad. I'm sort of thinking maybe I've denied that red back a meal. Uh, that's all the stuff that gets stuck in the web. Uh, very easy to, easy to identify. And I'll just get this one open here. It's one of the ones using the magnet system. Um, yeah, I quite like, I don't know, I quite like this style of trap, although those cheaper ones are, are sort of always shouting at me as being an obvious thing to do. Let's take a look inside here. Okay, the red back's there, and it's actually just reminded me there's a couple of stories to tell here. That there's the remnants of the huntsman spider that I put in here as a red back feed. There's a very juvenile female red back there. I'm hoping it's female, you'll tell me if I'm wrong. And we'll go down and we'll take a look at her. She's recluse right down the bottom there. She started to make the characteristic cone of web around her. And if I come down and try and razz her up, um, we'll see how she's moving. Although she probably won't want to know anything about me. They tend to play uh, a little bit. Oh, she's having a bit of a kiss of the tweezers there. And oh, there she comes. Okay, so she's being very red back. That's the way they play. Um, just disturbing her, her home there, which she won't like. But I'll just pull those tweezers out, hopefully without her on there. And I'll um, let her be. Oh, crikey, see she comes. She's coming with me. Now, I want you to stay there. I don't want you to come with me. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I just... Oh, crikey's. How am I going to get this spider back where she was before? Oh, I've really given her a hard time. Um, maybe I can give her a little gift, hey? Because I know I've got one with me. Uh, hopefully that will make her feel a little bit happier. Uh, it wasn't nice disturbing a little home there. Uh, I think by removing that stick insect from the web I was, I was tinkering with nature, I think really it was going to become the Redback's meal. And considering I messed up her home so much, well, she got a meal back. And it's looking like that she's realised that I've given her a lovely feast for Christmas. Well, the only way that stick insect can get out of there is if it plays out like a stick. And then the Redback's going to get very bored and just think it's something in its web to get rid of. But if it acts like an insect, I'll tell you what, that Redback is going to do what Redbacks do. And actually, I'll put the money on the Redback in this situation. It didn't take long. The Redback's actually uh, made a move. And I'm pretty sure that that stick insect was going to be the meal anyway. It wasn't the web. And uh, I did upset the Redback's home there. I was feeling a bit guilty about that. But I'm not feeling guilty now. I'd never let my girls go hungry. It's possibly best to let nature take its course there. I will put this, uh, what do I call it, little red back home that they love to live in back where it was. She's a lovely girl, isn't she? And the magnets will do all the tricks here when I spin this up and just get in the right position and very gently put it down. Yeah, so these little Redbacks homes are more about the idea of keeping your friends close and your enemies even closer. At least if they're living here, I can deal with them. If there's an egg sack there, I can take it away and stop them from breeding up numbers. Crikey, I hope we learned something in this video or else I'm in a stack of trouble.